Hello everyone, Michael here, doing another tutorial uh, focused around fur, but this time I'm talking about the Marshner Hair Shader from uh, Renderman. It's kind of a difficult shader to work with if you're new to it. There's quite a lot of settings that you might know, not know what to do with. So I thought I'd run down uh, what they all are, which will save you a lot of time rendering uh, and some settings that can get you going and get you set up. So basically I'm going to be showing you how to get your guy or you know whatever your furry creature is to look like this uh, this is a render that I've already obviously uh, rendered and a scene that I've already set up and um, I'm going to show you what that scene looks like and then we're going to get on with the tutorial all right so here is Maya and here is my scene so I'll just run this down really quickly um, I've got an environment light which has got a uh, in the final render it's got an image an HDRI image set to it uh, and I've also got three lights, um, just a, co a cool cool balance light, uh, a hot direct light, and then just a, a backlight, a rim light there. Um, but for all the renders that you're going to see, um, I'm actually going to hide these uh, and just keep the environment light, which I'm actually just going to set to a white or almost white, sort of a semi, uh, I can show you exactly, 0.76 value um, white shader. Uh, just so um, it can render a little bit quickly for my sake um, and there's less distraction. So yeah, let's get on with it. All right, so here's our guy fully rendered and um, I'm gonna show you what he looks like with all the lights turned off and the environment set to just basically white. And here he is. So uh, as you can see, he's a little bit less saturated because the lights that are on him, um, the lights that were on him rather aren't highlighting any of his colors. Um, and I'll also show you an image of the UV map for this guy. Uh, if you haven't done my previous tutorial on applying UV maps to textures, check that one out first because that's going to show you how to get a uh, UV map, map applied to your X-Gen uh, X um, fur in RenderMan. Uh, so yeah, here's the settings that I used for the actual render, uh, the previous render, this one here. Um, but um, I'm going to change all these values to be the default settings um, and then we're going to run through and, sh and I'll show you what they all look like. So if you've put a UV map on your creature and you've clicked render this is base and add applied a Martian hair shader, this is basically what he looks like. So these are the, this is everything the exact same, the same UVs, uh, but these are all the default settings um, for the Martian shader. The only thing that I've changed is the diffuse model. I, I prefer this algorithm, uh, which is the Kajia um, diffuse model. You can use the other one if you, if you like it. Um, play with them both. Um, you can obviously use the same tutorial just with the different uh, diffuse algorithms. But I prefer this one. It seems to be a little bit more vibrant. So um, yeah, as you can see, completely dark and um, sort of muddy looking and obviously not what you want. It doesn't look anything like the UV map that I showed you earlier. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go to the diffuse gain which is this setting here. So by bumping that up to two, it's essentially uh, working like a multiplier in Photoshop. So it's doubling the color um, by itself and giving you this result. It's still a little bit muddy, but it's um, a heck of a lot better than this, as you can see. So um, yeah, bumping that up to 2.0, um, and this is where I'll keep it. And then I'll show you the next stage, uh, which is gonna be uh, the secondary and transmit uh, specular game. So I've just set these settings down to 0.07. Um, I didn't want to turn them completely off just so I could show you the difference. So uh, so yes, at those settings you can see that um, it removes a lot of the translucency around the edge um, and you get it a lot more sort of uh, a, a flatter shader overall. Um, and I'll show you what happens when you change the primary uh, spec gain. So uh, boosting that up to 1.0, it's a little bit lighter. I'll just bounce between the two. So this is with it off and this is with it all the way up. Just barely you can see it. It's just getting a little bit more light on those surface um, surface furs. Uh, so I'm going to keep that there and I'm going to move down and increase the uh, secondary specular gain. And as you can see, just bouncing between it, you're getting that rim light back again. Uh, set to 0.5 and if I turn turn the trans uh, transmit specular gain up you're getting a whole lot of that um, white coming through the edges the reason for this 
um, I'll explain with this diagram. So um, the primary gain, uh, the primary specular effect is what you're seeing is the light is hitting the edge of the fur here and then just bouncing off and that's that's just the reflection and that's all you're getting with that uh, with that um, slider. Um, the secondary specular which is TRT or transmit reflect transmit so what that means is the light is coming through it's transmitting through the first surface and then it's reflecting off the inside surface and then it's transfer uh, it's transmitting out again to the camera uh, and finally um, the transmit specular is where the light is uh, transmitting through the first surface and then transferring uh, transmitting again through the second surface and hitting the camera uh, if the camera is obviously on the other side of it. So that's why you can see if you go back here, this transmit gain, if you turn it down, you don't get a, as much light coming through the edge of the um, fur there because there's, there's a light source behind this guy obviously. So when you turn it um, on, you can see the light coming through and it's giving that sort of outer glow effect. So obviously if you've got a light source behind them and you want to give a nice sort of rim light, you can bump this value up and it's going to um, and it's going to change it to look like that. Um, here's a note on specular color. Um, this is on the Render Man website. This is something that sort of isn't necessarily intuitive. Uh, so what it says is specular color for tinting the transmit, uh, the secondary specular and the glint lobe. Um, this specular color does not tint the primary specular lobe. So basically this this color here only affects these sliders here whereas the primary specular gain is controlled by this color here so this is worth keeping in mind if you're changing the specular color on the fur that this con is controlling this value and the specular con uh, color is being controlled by these values here um, all right so moving on to cone angle um, so with this one when you reduce the cone angle you're essentially making a more obvious line um, at the edge of where the light is refracting off a, um, a, a piece of fur. This, uh, this isn't the best um, fur model to, or, or hair model for that, uh, for that matter, to sort of give this example. But on a long piece of hair, uh, essentially what would be happening if you imagine the silhouette was the hair, um, a smaller, a smaller um, cone angle would mean that the light bounces off in a smaller angle so that means that you're getting like a between lots of hair you're getting like a sharper refraction between them and I'll show you the difference when you turn it back up to eight you can see that that line there of the edge of the fur of the bounce light from behind isn't as obvious so I'll turn that back on again uh, cone angle yeah so you can see that there and that there is what's being affected um, glint gain. This one you're probably not going to mess with a whole lot. Um, it's set to zero by default and that's pretty much where I keep it for most things. It's essentially just adding gain to the white um, sort of specularity that's on the on the fur which is bouncing off um, caused by the light. Um, this is at set to five. If you go any higher it starts to get even crazier. You might be going for this sort of effect. It sort of looks a bit frosty so if you're looking for like someone to look like they're frozen or something that could be good. Uh, but generally I would recommend keeping it down to zero. Refraction index. This one is interesting. Basically this is science. Um, refraction index uh, by default is 1.55 and what refraction index is talking about is how light refracts through a median. So in this case the median is hair. Uh, and the default is set to 1.55. Now, if you look up a bunch of what a uh, bunch of different types of refraction indexes, um, like a vacuum, for instance, will be 1.0 because there's nothing uh, changing the, the way the light refracts. Um, funnily enough, 1.55 is actually the same refraction index as amber. So, amber and hair possibly uh, share similar properties. That's why they've chosen uh, 1.55 for hair by default. I'm not sure exactly, but there's a bunch of different. Um, refraction indexes and I'll leave a link here to the Wikipedia article so you can look at the table if you're trying to do other things. Refraction index applies to other shaders as well so if you see the slider on other shaders then you'll sort of know what to do with it a little bit easier. I think it's on the glass shader as well so that could be useful in the future for you. Um, so I'm going to turn that back down to 1.55 which is the amber shader and then we're going to get into the thing that really starts to make your um, fur pop uh, so which is starting with presence. 
Now you're thinking that, oh yes, finally, I'm starting to get some saturation from this guy. Um, but you remember, if you look at my model, I've actually applied the UV color that's applied to the hair to the body as well. So what Presence is doing is it's making the hair more transparent. So at 0.5, it's 50% um, opaque and at zero it's completely invisible. So what you're seeing is the lights actually coming through the fur and bouncing off the UV layers underneath as well as the fur itself and then being transmitted through it. So this could be useful in some circumstances but generally I'd just keep this set to 1.0. Um, you could probably do something with like a, I, never, I haven't tried it yet, but you could probably do something with like a ramp or something to control the alpha so it gets more transparent towards the edge. I'm not 100% certain, I'm pretty sure it's something you could do though. Um, and finally, this is the prize winner, um, Shadow Opacity Color. This is where you're going to get all the saturation back for your colors. Um, so uh, there's a couple of values that you need to try and play with. Uh, so if you click the Shadow Opacity Color, which I'll show you right now. Okay, so in the Hyper Shade Editor, um, if you go to Shadow Opacity under your Marshner here, uh, and you click it, this is the value that you want to change, which is the val which is the alpha value essentially of the color. So um, I'm setting it 2.85 for this first example, um, and, I, and you can see the result here. So that's at 0.85. Basically what it's doing is it's changing how black the shadows are. Um, and the the lower the value, uh, the the more opaque it is, the more it's sort of reverse sort of logic. The more black that is, that color is, the the more transparent the shadow is. You sort of have to flip your mind here a little bit. But um, so yeah, you can see at 0.85 you're starting to get a lot more of that color back. Um, and I'll show you 0.6, a lot more. Um, and as you can see, where the light's transmitting through the fur, it's sort of starting to multiply on that color. And this is to do with the diffuse gain setting as well. So keep that in mind. You're going to have to find a balance between this setting and the top setting and all your um, specular settings as well. So maybe this is getting a little bit yellow for your taste. So you want, might want to drop, drop the transmit specular gain down to like 0.2 or 0.3. Um, and finally, he starts to go nuclear when you drop it down to 0.35. And obviously that once again, if you keep going down and without it changing any of these settings, it's gonna be even crazier color wise. And it's just gonna like, as you can see the shadows non-existent almost. So, um, so that's pretty much it though. Um, that's just a brief overview of the Marshner shader, but um, hopefully that saves you some time fiddling around with renders and it gives you an idea of what all the different sliders mean and, and how to get your renders looking like this guy here. And admittedly, this isn't my best render. Um, it's probably a little bit oversaturated on this side here. I'm starting to lose a definition in the fur um, because of the way I set the lights up and I set the, the shader up on this particular model. And maybe it's a little bit too out of focus on that far, far eye, but Hey, got to be critical of your own work. Don't you sometimes? So, uh, yeah, if, uh, you liked this tutorial though, make sure you, uh, give it a like and, um, subscribe because I'm always looking to do more tutorials. And if you, um, have got any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, usually within a day or two. And if there's any, um, any things that you're not sure about in Maya and Renderman and you'd like me to do a tutorial, um, just, uh, drop me a little comment and, um, I'll, if I know how to do it or if I can figure it out pretty easily, I'll do a tutorial for you and, um, get you on your way to doing some sweet renders of your own. So yeah, I hope you liked it and until next time, I'll see ya.